Namaste and welcome to Post Shoveling Recovery Flow with Megan Campbell. Just bring yourself into a comfortable seated position for a few moments, hands together in front of the heart. Start to lengthen and deepen your breath, breathing in and out through the nose. And this is a really great flow for right after you're done shoveling because it helps us to open some parts of the body that might feel a little sore and tender after. So we want to take our right leg out to the right, tuck the left heel into the groin area, and then slide your right hand down your right leg, lift your left arm up and over your head, and just let your fingers drip towards your right leg. If you want to go a little deeper, you can always drop your right elbow onto a block or even the ground and catch your head in your right hand. Let's keep the left knee nice and heavy. You can put a block underneath it if you need to. Just releasing into the hip and the low back and the side waist. And taking the arm back up to the sky, turn the palm back and then slide the back of your left hand right up between your shoulder blades if you can. Basically as high up the back as you can possibly get it. And keep feeding the breath into your left side waist. And gently pressing into the right hand to come up and we'll switch sides. Tuck the right heel into the groin, extend the left leg out. And you can bend your knee here if you need to. The Hammies are feeling a little sticky or tight. And again, just check in as you make your right knee really heavy. Take the right arm up and over your head. And if there's enough space to keep the right knee down on a block or the ground, you can bring the left elbow to the ground as well or another block. And let your top arm really relax. Your head relax as much as you can. Right after all that forward movement of shoveling, it often feels really good to release the laterals. So you're going to take the back of the right hand as you bend the elbow to your upper back and try to snuggle it in between your shoulder blades. And by releasing the lat laterals, we also release through the hips and the low back. The encouragement of a nice, full, deep breath. Use your left hand to prop yourself back up and find your way onto your hands and knees. You can also do it on your fists or your forearms and you're just going to drop your belly and then wiggle your shoulder blades down the back away from the ears. We're staying in the cow position for a few long deep breaths, opening through the chest. Tucking the toes, exhale into downward facing dog. Again, if the backs of the legs are feeling a little tight, keep the knees bent. If not, feel free to straighten out the legs as long as you can keep the low back long. And drawing the feet together, inhale the right leg up to the sky, bend your right knee and open the hip without dropping the right shoulder. And lower the right foot beside the left and then inhale the left leg up, bend the knee, open your hip keeping the shoulders parallel to the top of the mat and placing the left foot back down beside the right. Inhale the right leg back up to the sky. As you exhale, step it up between the hands, lower the left knee to the earth. And take your left hand out to the left a little bit and reach back for your right foot. Excuse me, left foot. If you can't reach it today, no worries. Just bring your right hand onto the thigh and gently twist back, lifting the foot up enough so that you can feel a stretch. To go deeper, you might drop right down onto your left elbow or even bringing your forehead onto a block, diving to the inside of your right leg and just gently encouraging the heel to continue to come in towards that left hip.
letting your left foot go, come back up onto the hands, turn your back foot in like a flipper, drop the right knee down, turn your toes out towards the short edges of your mat. Take your knees as wide as you can and then come down onto your elbows for frog pose. And if it's too much, just bring your feet closer together, pointing your toes back instead. back up onto the hands and we're going to turn over our left leg so lift the knee up place the foot down and turn the right leg back behind you take your right hand out to the right a little bit more lift uh, the left sorry right foot up and take your left hand back maybe catch the foot if not just leave it on your thigh and again if you're going deeper maybe dropping your right elbow down Maybe lowering your forehead to the ground to snuggle into the inner left thigh, releasing through the quads. As soon as you feel something, you're doing it right. So just stay and honor any sensations that you're breathing into. And coming back up onto the hands as you let your right foot go. Bring your left knee back beside the right knee, so you're back into table pose. Lower down onto your elbows to the right underneath the shoulders, and again, drop the belly, open the heart, maybe look up with the eyes for a couple breaths. Just getting some different muscles in the shoulders and chest. And then gently lower the pelvis down, point the toes back, coming into Sphinx Pose. And if it's too intense, take your legs wider, try sliding your elbows towards the top of your mat. Keep trying to broaden through the collarbones, pulling the shoulder blades behind you on your back. Then you're going to thread your left arm under your body, pull the left elbow in and the shoulder down. And if that's enough, you can stay here, bringing the head to the ground, or again, take the back of your right hand and try to slide it up between your shoulder blades. And then maybe catch it with your left hand, so you have half cow face arms in that right arm. It's releasing through the triceps and the shoulders biceps. And letting that go, prop back up onto your elbows so you can feed your left arm under your body, pull the right shoulder away from the face, lower the head down. And perhaps take the back of the left hand to the upper back and the back of the heart and catch it with your right hand. Send the breath into the lower back so you can feel it rise and fall as you lay on your belly. And then letting that go, come back up onto the elbows in Sphinx Pose. If your low back is healthy, you might lift your elbows up for seal, keeping the hips and pubic bone down on the ground. Let your legs and your bum relax here, just releasing through the lower back. And dropping the elbows back down so you can press up onto your hands and knees. Slide your knees forward, tuck your toes under, sit back on your heels to release the soles of the feet and then work into reverse prayer, taking your hands together behind the back, fingers pointing up or down or even taking the elbows or forearms, whatever you can reach. Try to really intend the elbows back. Sit up as tall as you can. Gently in front of you, 
lift up into Uttanasana, so hips to the sky, head towards the earth in a forward fold. As you feel stable, bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers so your palms face each other. Keep pulling the shoulders away from the ears and up towards the hips. Reach the knuckles to the sky. You can also do this with a strap. As you feel ready, let the baby fingers start to fall past your head towards the floor. No tension in the neck, shaking out the head perhaps. slowly crawl them forward so you can drop your knees back down move your feet to one side and have a seat on your bum lowering down onto your back this is where you'll need a block or even books or pillows work fine to slide under your lower back only lifting up as high as it feels right there should be no pain or sharpness and then turning the palms open to the sky for supported bridge after all that forward bending and the taxing of the muscles of the lower back from shoveling, nice back bend works well. If you feel a little more freedom, you can go up higher. If not, just stay at the level and then you're at. And then the last option is just to stretch your legs straight out, keeping them on the mat. through the psoas, the belly, and the chest. Make sure you can feel your breath in your belly. You can even watch it in the belly rise and fall. too intense you can bend your knees again and just put your feet back down on the ground and if you haven't done that already go ahead and slide your feet in and down Lift your hips high enough that you can slide the block or books or blankets out from underneath your low back. Gently curl down onto the ground. And take both knees over towards the left side of your mat. And you can bring the knees together, or cross your right leg up and over the left like eagle legs. And maybe look to the right. Moving the knees closer to or further away from your body helps to increase or decrease the intensity, so just finding what feels right. And going over to the other side as you're ready. And looking where it's comfortable, let your eyes close, and soften into the pose. the knees in towards your chest, bring your forehead up to the knees, give yourself a really big hug for all that hard work earlier. And then stretch out into Shavasana, maybe putting blocks under the knees if the low back feels tender. And today just stay for as long as you have and you can, really resting through the body, the mind, and integrating the practice 